All right, by popular request, I'm going to be talking about ES6. Yes, that's JavaScript Harmony, the next incarnation of JavaScript. I've been using it uh, for the better part of a year, just day in, day out on projects, and I'm loving it. I'm absolutely never going back. I'm using it both in Node um, on back end and also in React and Angular stuff on the front end and whatnot. So it's it's tremendous, and I would highly recommend anyone get into it. So I'm going to kind of cover, first of all, the features and also along the way just what I think the most useful aspects and maybe some patterns of using those features are. If I feel like this video is getting long-winded, we'll just break it up into two. Um, so let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, first of all, if you're wondering how do I transpile or actually how do I write ES6 and have ES5 safely in the browsers, um, you're going to want to use babeljs.io. Um, definitely is my favorite transpiler. Um, and it's really seamless. If you already have any kind of build system going on that's compiling SAS or minifying JavaScript, it's pretty much effortless to add in Babel and then go um, ES6 down to 5 or ES7 down to 5. Babel even supports some ES7 features, which are great. Um, the other big players, Google Traceur, Trace Schwa, whatever the French would say with that word. Um, and that's also big i feel like babel is you know really kind of become the main guy with transpiling javascript es6 so babel.js is my recommendation go for it you'll like it let's get into it so uh kind of some great es6 features here my favorite the one that i hands down use day in day out is destructuring i actually added destructuring to my mac dictionary because it didn't know what that word means and so basically let's say you've got an object called foo and we've got bar is one, boz is two. Uh, and then you can basically just destructure those out. So instead of going var bar equals foo.bar and var boz equals foo.boz, I can just go var bar boz equals foo. And that's basically the same thing. So now I have two variables that have been created on my page. I can do, you know, alert bar, alert. Who uses alert anymore? Um, and so that's very, very cool. I could just snatch out bar, you know, leave boz for later. This is very useful for when you have large objects and you just want to snatch a value or two out of it. Or if you have objects with very large names, very large name, and you just do not want to call that all the time, you can just snatch a value out of it, uh, create a local variable or something. So very, very nice. You can also do this with um, arrays. Uh, tense, let's see. Whoop, we're doing arrays here. Uh, let's do first person, second person, third person tenses. And so then I could go there first person equals uh, what I call the tenses. So then it's just basically going to snatch out uh, the first argument of my array. And when I'm destructuring, I usually put a space on either side to kind of visually give you that cue that. I'm not creating an array, I'm destructuring an array. That's kind of one thing I found helpful. Whether you're destructuring objects or destructuring um, arrays, it's helpful to have that space on either side because it kind of gives your brain this visual cue, oh, we're destructuring something here. So this would automatically grab number one, and this would automatically grab number two. So first person is me, second person is you. And where this is really helpful uh, is maybe if you're doing a promise.all, so I'm giving it several promises. Promise one, you know, so that's gonna give me some responses. Then I can do a then. So I have all my results in an array. So then I can go there, results one. I can actually destructure that. Equals results. And there's a better way of doing that, which I'll get into later on, because I can actually destructure these arguments as well, which is very cool. I can actually go, I'll just do it now. I can actually go results one, results two. Uh, and then I actually have results one and results two available here. So it's gonna destructure that array out straight into the variable names I desire it to be. So it really saves a lot of code. What you'll find out is most ES6 features are not so much new features. The most useful parts of ES6 are not so much that they're new functionality, they just really improve the day-to-day -day coding experience. Uh, they really make JavaScript a lot of what the language has been lacking for a long time. Um, 
And so they just, it's just much more enjoyable. It's what CoffeeScript tried to do a while back, but became too much of its own language to, to take complete mainstream adoption. So I won't get into that uh, argument there. But let's say you can also destructure objects. This is actually very useful. So let's say foo equals two. Uh, I can actually go, I'm building an object. And let's say I have bar equals one, and I could go foo equals two. Well, I don't have to do that. If I want it to have the same name and the same value as foo, I just type in foo. And that's basically the same as going foo two. So it's going to say, oh, does the foo variable exist? It does exist. Let's print it out and print its valuable. Uh, and value. So that's really nice if you're calling functions. Let's say I'm calling some method um, and I want to give it an object of, let's say I've got name. And I got my name and my age. And I'm, I have to pass those in. Well, I can just go name age. And that's going to pass in that object. Uh, will. I basically just made that object. So it's much cleaner syntax uh, for spitting out the exact same thing. Again, just very helpful. Um, and you can also go, you can also generate your own keys. So I could say name equals will. I could go name plus will plus name. I don't find this one very useful. I think I've used it once or twice is some value. So that's basically the same as going name will, which you really can't do. Uh, it's just it's really just one of those use cases. You couldn't do it um, unless you wanted to just create an object first. That's kind of how you'd have to do it before ES6. And then you'd have to go object name. So you have to kind of do this second step equals some value. So now you can actually define that when you're defining the object up here. You can do that exact same um, bracket notation. So that's very helpful as well. So you can destructure stuff. Um, let's look at destructuring arguments because this is a very, very useful feature. Uh, let's say I have a function for, let's calculate BMI here. We need weight to do that and we need height. All right, so there's my function and then BMI what is that weight divided by I think the square of your height and this all has to be metric or something like that but I'll just pretend it's metric already so there we go so that's my BMI uh, and some guy down here calls it calc BMI say it already exists somewhere okay so that's going on let's say now we're gonna add a callback feature so I can also call that back if callback BMI. So that's going to pass in. Uh, and then this guy is going to do the exact same thing, but he's also going to give it a callback function that does something with that value. Uh, and then let's say at some point, well, now we want to enter in a max here. So you can also enter in a max. Um, and some of you guys are seeing where I'm going. This guy needs to enter in a max of 25. So if it's over the max, if uh, BMI is over max, then we're going to console log uh, that your weight is too high. You're overweight. So that, of course, then creates this problem because we're not passing in a max here. So we have to pass in null. And you basically end up with these arguments that are these functions uh, that are kind of hard coupled to the order of your arguments, which can make for some really frustrating situations sometimes. So what we could do instead is we could pass in an object. Once again, we're going to do that exact destructuring we've done. We're basically going to create a new object. And we're just doing the object as a one thing, which would commonly be called something like opts, right? So then all throughout your BMI, you're going to say if opts.callback, you know, and stuff like that. You're going to do opts.height, opts.weight. Well, now you don't have to do that. You can just kind of destructure them coming in. Uh, which my syntax is looking weird on this, but that is correct. We can totally do this. Uh, we're actually pulling in weight, height, max, callback, and I'm just going to say max has a default of 25. I can do default arguments, which is very nice. So this max is going to be 25 if it's undefined. Um, and so then callback's going to be there. So this is very nice. 
And then I can do this exact same thing here. I don't have to worry about max anymore. I'm passing in max as undefined. And I'm passing in a callback right there. Uh, so that's really nice. Basically, it doesn't, the order doesn't matter anymore. I could totally move these orders around here. Uh, weight, height, it doesn't matter. I'm going to pull them all in correctly. Uh, another thing that I can do is I can also kind of change the, the naming of these. So I want weight to come in as W. I want height to come in as H. So now you're going to come in as W. You're going to come in as H. Um, I can have, and then there's max, so that's fine. So that's another cool thing is you can destructure them. You can destructure them with default values. This also works when you're just destructuring objects somewhere else. Uh, more and more, I find myself converting interfaces to destructuring objects when there's multiple arguments. I feel like it's just cleaner. It's less error prone. Um, it's just really nice. It makes for nice code. Uh, so that's good. Let me show you one more thing and then we'll go ahead and stop this video and get into another one. So you can kind of learn, spend some time, get comfortable with these and move on. And that's template strings. Love template strings. Uh, so some something you find yourself doing all the time is, uh, my name is Will, and then you have to say greet. Hi, my name is, and then plus name, plus and I like to party. Uh, then you're like, oh, well, now party has to be something else. So thing equals party. Now you have to do I like to. And then you have to do thing. And then you have to do plus, And then you have to add your period. It, it's really a mess. And then, of course, you find out, ah, I left my space out. I got to add my space. Um, and so that's the kind of thing that is really annoying. And then of course, multi-line, uh, let's not even get into multi-line because then I have to add that. And then if I want it to feel like multi-line, then I got to do all these tabs. Yuck. So that's something we don't like to do. Um, and of course, template strings really fixes that. I can just go greet equals, you do a back tick instead, which of course looks and feels very strange at first. And my syntax highlighting has not picked this up. Let me see if I can. Uh, let's see if JavaScript picks it. Nah, my syntax highlighting doesn't have this. Adam has much better ES6 highlighting. I usually use Adam when I'm doing ES6, uh, but oh well. Uh, let's see. So, hi, my name is. And then I can go name, which kind of coffee script ish. If some of you guys have used coffee script before, dollar sign in those brackets basically means look for that variable, pop that variable in. And I like to thing. There we go. It's done. Add your exclamations, do whatever. Oh yeah. And guess what? You can also do multiple lines and I like to party. So there you go. That's awesome. Template strings are tremendous. Uh, let's get into a few more features, but I'll give you a breather so you can recap this section if you want. And we'll get into some more extremely useful features in the next video.